everybody, it's Friday. The good news is we found your bass player. The bad news is he can't afford to pay bail. All right, everybody, welcome to episode number 221 of SMG Viewers Comments, my weekly show where I try and answer your comments and questions to the best of my ability. Let's get right to it. Go on! What are your thoughts on punching in riff by riff and crossfading for guitar tracks? None of us want to sit through three to five takes or 16 hours for someone to get it right. Each song gets done in a fraction of time, usually each riff completed one to two takes the most. I've gotten great results with this method, but also wonder if it's considered performance enhancing pussy shit. Can we genuinely expect guitars to hit every single note perfectly in one take for a whole song? Work smarter, not harder, as they say. I think that's a great question. You know, the thing with doing punch-ins is everything in moderation. There is a fine line between getting a great performance and wasting time, and there's also a fine line between punching in and then just creating something that the guitar player really can't do on his own. Uh, as it stands, I've had it happen a couple times where guitar players have nailed a track all the way through, but yeah, it's pretty rare. Generally, when I'm tracking, I'll record something and we'll wind up punching in a few bits here and there, but riff by riff, I find just is kind of uninspiring and really fucking tedious. Um, it's 10 times worse when you're doing bass players when you have to track riff by riff because they don't know the fucking songs. Hey Glenn, CD Baby called and they want their pacifier back. In all honesty though, I have a friend who is a two-time Juno winner and his new album is up for several awards. After releasing his new album almost a year ago, CD Baby had the price at $10.99 per album and was supposed to be $12.99. Almost a year later and hundreds of dollars lost, he is still fighting for the price change with no luck. Doesn't matter who you are, CD Baby will dry fuck you with no discrimination. Okay, in case anybody was warning, the Junos are kind of like the Kmart version of the Grammys. They're the Canadian version and a lot of artists who nobody's ever heard of outside of Canada win them. That being said, you know, I still haven't heard anything from CD Baby. Nobody's reached out to me from that company to try and set the record straight. Uh, so I am kind of wondering what the deal is there. And given the stories I've heard from other people having their videos demonetized or having the earnings seized on songs they already own, uh, that story wouldn't surprise me one bit. Once again, if somebody at CD Baby wants to write me and say, hey, you know what, we're working on this, or hey, we've made this easier, I'm all ears, but as it stands right now, uh, the jury is definitely out on CD Baby. Proceed with caution. Glenn! What's a good cheap acoustic drum recording set? The mics and brain and cables. I have to use one mic to record my drums as of now, and it, of course, sounds like ass. Thank you in advance, love the show. Well, you know, I've demoed a couple different sets of cheaper uh, drum recording mics. Samson put out a set that was okay, and uh, Toman has the T-Bone set here which isn't too bad at all. I think it's like 300, 350 euros, something like that. I'll have a link you can follow and uh, check that out. And remember, it doesn't cost very much to import it. But uh, my absolute favorite set of drum mics for under a thousand bucks has to be the Lewitts. They are beyond stellar and well worth the money. Uh, the Tom mics alone are like 99 bucks and they're fucking killer. I really want to shoot those out against the 421s and show you guys just how good they truly are. And as always, my absolute top of the line favorite drum recording mic set ever has got to be the Earthworks, but those are significantly more money. And in my opinion, if you're recording a lot of live drums, definitely worth the investment. I highly doubt Reverb will let anyone resell this pedal on their site. I'm sure they'll find something offensive about it. Like one, the name is too dirty. Two, it has a pentagram in the rooster's eye, so it must be evil. Three, it might cause violence or some shite along the lines of that. Four, it's a Glenn Fricker pedal. Keep it up, Fricker. I'm learning a lot from this channel and would like to continue doing so. So just keep on keeping on. And fuck you, Glenn. Of course, you're referencing the one and only SMG cock blocker. It's still available for pre-order. Uh, we are well past the first half of all available units being completely sold out. We're fast approaching two thirds sold out. So if you want to get your hands on one of these and they're kind of on the fence, uh, better get one now before they're gone for good. Like I said, these things have been selling a lot faster than I ever expected. If you're curious about what it does, check out my demo I did with Jen Majera from Evanescence, or uh, I've got a couple of other ones where I shoot it out against a Boss NS2. And I gotta say, it is the absolute finest gate pedal I have ever played. It's a limited edition, so if you want one, get on the pre-order now before it's gone for good. Now back to the show. And now it's time for the butthurt of the week. The most annoying, overblown, ham-fisted asshole of the YouTube guitar recording community. Dude still doesn't grasp that the Bobcat Goldway routine is nauseatingly painful to watch. 
Then to top it off, he's got to throw in the ultra douchey 45 degree angle. Shot sigh. It's like a middle-aged accountant wearing a heavy metal wig for the office Halloween party. Well, hey, dude, you know what? I really appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much for taking the time to write in. I appreciated it so much. I went and checked out your channel and it turns out that nobody actually gives a fuck what Spade thinks. The fat, ugly guy is quite funny. Hey, Terry, you know what? It never ceases to amaze me how many dudes write in to comment about me being ugly. I've said this before, I'll say it again, is if you want pretty looking men, go back to your grinder account. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, I'm just saying be true to yourself and come out of the fucking closet already. Just out of curiosity, is burn-in still a problem for OLED screens? You're referencing my brand new laptop I got from Slick Audio, this thing's made in China. It's like an OEM thing where several other brands will buy them and rebrand them. I got mine from Jim Slick at, at Slick Audio. It's set up for audio production on Windows. So Windows doesn't fuck with your stuff, but these are available from Falcon Northwest and a whole bunch of other vendors and whatnot. So far, so good. The screen is probably one of the most awesome things I've ever seen. It's kind of like having a mini movie theater on your desktop. Seriously, it is that good. The skin tones are just fucking unreal. The clarity is unreal. I'm, I'm just shocked beyond belief what this thing actually looks like. That being said, I have not run into any burn-in issues yet, even after using it for several days on end. I will definitely keep you guys posted if I run into any burn-in issues. The thing is, you know, for those of us who grew up in the TV tube generation, you know, with our Ataris and Intellivisions, you know, we all knew about burn-in, like they warned you right in the instruction manuals. The trick is don't leave it on the same screen for 12 fucking hours and it might just last. Game here for your childish empathetic video. What's the single chain and mic setup on the drums? I'm guessing EQ, comp, noise suppressor, and then two overheads, then a room mic. Just trying to get better at recording and mixing live drums. Tired of using Easy Drummer 2 for everything. Great mix. Are you referencing the Like a Fujin video I put out a couple weeks ago? That's this anime cover we did from the title Beck Mongolian Chop Squad, one of my all time favorite animes. Uh, the drum chain on that was uh, number one, a super awesome room with a super awesome drummer. We tracked that in the LA studio. We used a set of Earthworks mics for the close ups and the overheads. And we used a pair of Jay Z V67s for the room mics. And we had a U48 in one of the vocal booths, just kind of as a crush slash fun mic as well. The hi hat was a little overbearing. Uh, I was just trying out the brand new arouser plugin and I was using that on the room mics. And I might have compressed just a little too hard, but uh, man, the snare sound we got, uh, just, I was so thrilled with, with the result we got and wound up having a lot more room mic in that mix than I would normally have. And I thought it gave it a lot of life. Better ha to have a slightly louder hi-hat with an awesome snare than a quieter hi-hat with a not as awesome snare in my opinion. Anyway, I plan on doing a whole mix breakdown on that at some point. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Thanks for turning me on to the show. Turns out Funimation put the whole thing on YouTube for free. Gotta ask though, are you a sub or a dub guy? Now I'm an anime fan from way back. I mean like early 70s way back. I mean, like the first anime I could ever remember watching was Prince Planet. And then, you know, I was into Star Blazers and Robotech and all that. So most of the anime I grew up watching was all English dubs. So that's what I'm used to. Um, if something comes out that's really amazingly cool that doesn't have a dub, I will definitely watch the sub. I remember watching the first season of Attack on Titan in Japanese and I was absolutely fine with that. I even convinced my wife to watch that with me and she loved it too, so there you go. So yes, I am an anime nerd from way back and I'm damn proud of it. Mainly because there's some storytelling you'll see in those shows that you just won't see in Western TV shows and I think it's fucking cool. Hey Glenn, have you ever considered doing a video on sound for film? I'm a film major and I'm interested in learning more about it. Actually, I really want to do a show on that when I get back to LA. I've got a very good friend of mine from my college days, a guy named Brad Zorn, who does film for sound in Hollywood now. And um, if you guys want to leave a comment below, maybe we can get him to come out to the studio or I can go see him and he can take us through his process. I think that'd be really fucking cool. So if you guys want to see an episode on uh, sound for film, leave a comment below, ask Brad to participate in the show. I I think it'd be really fucking cool. When people complain about you asking drummers to change the spacing between their kit and cymbals, refer them to the fact that Bill Metroyer made Dave Lombardo record Show No Mercy without cymbals and then record the cymbal hits afterward. Even the great drummers need to make changes in the studio for the best recording possible. Yes, that's a great point. I'd also like to bring up another point. Every professional level drummer I've ever worked with, every single time I've asked them to make a slight change to their kit in the studio, either moving a hi-hat or moving, a, moving a, a drum up or flattening out a tom or moving a cymbal or something like that. Every time I've worked with a pro, it's always been no problem. What else do you need? 
Does that Angle Fredman IR come in your Glenn Fricker IR pack on Lancaster Audience website, or is that a different package in there? I see the Eagle has landed in Angle Pro, but not the Angle Fredman listed. Thinking of picking up your IR pack on there. Thanks, man. Yes, it is in there. It's just listed under that cabinet under one of the different mic configurations. But yes, I assure you, it is definitely in there. Thank you so much for asking. Definitely have a look and check it out. Please get Siegfried back, like, please. Funny you mentioned that. I was talking with Siegfried the other day and we're making some plans to do another anime cover at some point. Not quite sure yet what we're gonna do. I wanna do something a little more transformative. Uh, when we did Moon on the Water, that was originally you know this nice acoustic piece and we turned it into a power ballad. I'd like to do something like that again, where we take maybe a pop song or something really mellow and heavy the fuck out of it. I think those are, are, have a little bit more value than just the straight up, hey, here's a hard rock song, make it heavier kind of thing. I think those are a lot more fun. I don't know, what do you guys think? And if you've got any suggestions for hilarious anime pop songs we should turn into metal, I am all ears. Please leave a comment below. As always, I love hearing from you. Hey Glenn, being a follower of your show since 2017. I have a question, any advice to grow your YouTube channel? I have 133 subs at the moment and a little discouraged with my results. Any advice? Do what you're passionate about and be honest with yourself and be honest with your audience. Uh, the best advice I ever got uh, was from a very good friend of mine named Pat Lefebvre back in my college days. Channel 57 in Toronto used to have this little thing called Speaker's Corner. It was a video booth and every, you know you put in a buck and the money would go to charity and you get to talk for two minutes. And then they did a show called Speaker's Corner where they'd take a half hour and take all the best clips from the week and put them on. My buddy Pat said this to me. He said, the trick to getting on Speaker's Corner is to bluff like a lunatic into the camera for two minutes straight. <laughs> and he actually did get on there. But I, I took that to heart kind of more like, don't hold back. Don't be afraid to say what's actually on your mind. And above all, especially when it comes to the YouTube audience, be honest with them because people who watch YouTube are smart motherfuckers and can smell a fraud from a mile away. So do what you love. Don't hold back and don't pretend to be something you're not. Thanks so much for asking. I wish you the absolute best of luck. More anamorphic, please. Well, now I got some pretty interesting feedback. About three quarters of you guys really love the anamorphic look. Uh, a bunch of you guys are like, oh, the black bars, the black bars. Well, uh, last week's episode, we shot with that same cowl lens, um, but we exported at the proper frame size and hopefully that's gonna work out a little bit better. This week, we're still on anamorphic, but we're using a Bullex 1.5 squeeze. This is a super rare lens and it's got some really interesting character on the flares here. How fucking cool is that? These just these gorgeous blue flares. You can see the blue lights on the KS Digitals back there are kind of flaring out ever so slightly as well. And we're getting that kind of stretched look behind there. The Bolex is a super rare lens and they're really fucking expensive. I was lucky enough to track one down back in 2012. I shot a few music videos with it, but this dual focus thing is a giant pain in the ass. I did some homework this week and it turns out somebody makes a single focus solution for this lens. So I'm going to look into getting one of those, but I don't think I'm gonna bring this to California with me because if it got damaged on the plane, I don't think I'd ever forgive myself. Anyway, some more single focus solutions are coming out to the market. There's like a 40 millimeter design strictly for micro four thirds. I would really like to get my hands on. So if you guys want to see more anamorphic like that, that just looks super fucking awesome, uh, buy a cock blocker pedal because I can take some of that money and invest it back into the show. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to everybody who bought an SMG cock blocker. Remember, this is the greatest gate pedal I've ever played. And if you want to get your hands on it, you can get in on the pre-order now, grab it before it's gone. Until next time, I'll see you next week. Leave a comment, leave a question. You want to know something about recording? I want to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, Hasadigi, boy.